Hello, my friends. It's Nick, the ASMR nerd. And today, I am not doing a traditional relaxing review. I will not be reviewing this product in a formal sense. Um, today, what I will be doing is replacing the keycaps on one of my older keyboards. Inside this box, we have a very interesting, very nice looking, at least based on the pictures, set of keycaps provided to us by Banggood.com. So big thanks to Banggood for sponsoring today's video. Um, we're going to be taking these caps and I'm going to be swapping them out on a board that's got, quite frankly, a fairly boring set of keycaps. And along the way, uh, I'm going to be making some nice sounds with them, and hopefully uh, you might learn a little bit about different keycap profiles as well. Uh, I will, of course, give you my opinions on these keycaps as I do so, but uh, this isn't a formal review in the regular sense that I do here on the channel. So what I have in here, in this nondescript brown cardboard box, is a set of keycaps. They are from Max Key, and we've seen some products from Max Key here on the channel before, notably some keycaps featured on Akko keyboards were provided by Max Key. Um, and the profile of these caps is the SA profile, which is uh, different than your standard OEM profile that you see on most keyboards. Um, in fact, I'm just going to read off of uh, Desk Authority Wiki here just to uh, give you a little bit of information about the history and nature of SA keycaps. It says here, the SA family is a spherical keycap profile, so the edges, as you'll see, are uh, somewhat curved. Uh, offered by Signature Plastics. They were the original manufacturers of the SA profile. SA denotes spherical keycaps with the same profile across all rows. The tops of each individual cap are scooped in a spherical way as well. Um, originally a flat profile, SA was followed by the spherical sculpted SS profile, which was later retired, and now SA is the remaining spherical profile. So, that maybe doesn't mean a lot to you, but you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment here. So, let's open up this box. It would help if I did it right. So, these caps are the Miami Knights set. They are a black set with bright cyan alphanumerics and magenta modifiers. And uh, I really like the aesthetic of this set. It gives me strong 80s vibes. And so I'm going to use them to jazz up an otherwise very boring board that I have. So they come in this totally unmarked brown box. There's nothing on the back, nothing on the front. Just a Banggood stock sticker. You can hear them in there. The Miami Knights set is made of ABS plastic, which uh, might confuse some folks because uh, those of you who are familiar with uh, the mechanical keyboard community probably know that uh, PBT is the plastic material of choice for many enthusiasts. Um, and so you might wonder why these are not made of PBT. And I believe the answer lies in the history of this style of cap. Um, they're typically not uh, heavily textured. They've got this smooth kind of texture to them. Um, and you can't really get that so easily with PBT. Um, but ABS, you can get that feel very easily. So here we have the primary alphanumerics, and underneath we have 
another layer with a nav cluster, modifiers, numpad, and other weird stuff. So uh, it's all packed in here very nicely. Looks well protected. Everything is in its place. Um, but this profile, this style, you can probably tell just by looking at it. It goes way back. Uh, this was common on um, keyboards through the 80s, and even, I want to say even some typewriters in the 70s had, uh, had SA profile caps. But let's uh, just take this one as an example so you can see in profile it's curved on the sides, which is what lends it that uh, distinction as a, a spherical profile. And then the top is also scooped from all sides so that you have this kind of depression, um, which is on a 1U keycap, a spherical depression. It holds the finger, fingertip very nicely. So let's just um, let's get these out of here. I'm gonna move this box out of the way. So these are double shot ABS, which means the legends are, if I can get these out of here, they're a little slippery. The legends are never going to wear off. Uh, they are a piece of plastic within a piece of plastic. So very durable. You can see they are lightly textured, but they have that ABS shine to them, which is part of the aesthetic of this type of cap in many cases. And you can see, my goodness, look at the thickness of these caps. I didn't actually expect them to be quite so chunky, but we've got our outer, outer shell of black ABS here, and then inside we have a very robust looking um, socket for our cherry style stems and that piece is what forms the the legend as well um, and there is basically zero flex there there's a very thick keycap a teensy bit of flex but almost none um, and they feel very robust they feel very solid also worth noting that SA style caps are also very tall. Um, so if you don't like a tall key, it may not be for you. But look at the size, look at the height of this backspace. <laughs> it's a heckin' chonker. Isn't it? And it's also quite scooped here. Quite scooped. So these are pretty chunky caps. They are very substantial. And you can see, of course, we've got our, uh, like I said, the cyan alphas. Like the one that we were looking at a moment ago. These are a little tricky to get out of here, I won't lie. Because they're slightly slippery. Then we've got our... <laughs> our magenta modifiers. Uh, in that beautiful hue. Um, all the legends, as you can see, are centered on the alphas as well, which is a nice, a nice aesthetic that harkens back to that time. And uh, some of these novelty keys, novelty caps, just look really fun. This one's got cherries. This one's got flower. Again, all double shot. All very thick. And um, we've got enough in this set here for proper coverage of 
most boards, this will cover a full-size board. It will, of course, cover a 10 keyless and a 60%. It will also cover a 75% with a shortened left shift key, or right shift key, pardon me, over here. It will also uh, cover boards with uh, the wider um, two, I guess these are two U, not quite. I guess they're 1.75 U. Uh, control and Alt along the bottom there. Um, it'll cover, should cover pretty much uh, any layout, even non-standard. It should also cover a uh, 96 key layout as well because it's got um, the top row profile for uh, some of the nav cluster, which would normally not be the right profile to fit on that top row on a 96 keyboard. So, um, Aside from like really weird layouts like ortholinears or ergo docs or or any uh, totally weirdo non-standard things, uh, this has pretty good coverage and should uh, should cover you well. So, with all that said, uh, I'm really excited to put these on this board. I'll show you what board I'm going to put them on. This is not an exciting board. Um, it's this old Velocifier, uh, TKL02WS, I believe is what it was. I can't even remember. Yes, TKL02WS. Um, it's a wireless 10 keyless board. Um, it is solidly built, well made, but uh, not particularly exciting. The backlighting is only in white, so there's no RGB backlighting here. And um, the keycaps on it while serviceable, are just basic OEM profile ABS. They're double shot. They don't look bad, but I think with these Miami Knights caps on it, this could actually look pretty darn nice. Um, it's got a Tembu Brown switches for what it's worth. So we are going to attempt to give this board a glow up here with these these uh, nice looking caps and we'll see how it looks and how it sounds. First things first, let's take all the caps off of the original board. Now I must admit, I do actually have a different keyboard in mind for the final home of the uh, um, these Miami Knights caps, but it has not arrived yet. Uh, and it might be a little while, so for now, this is going to be where they reside. And um, I mostly I just wanted to see if taking these nice caps and putting them on a relatively inexpensive nondescript board uh, has the effect that I'm hoping for, which is that it look like something much more interesting and bespoke and uh, um, fun to look at. I'm using the trusty old uh, wire keycap puller here from uh, um, the mass drop control keyboard. It's still the best quality keycap puller I've received. And you know what? I was going to originally take all these off and then put all the new ones on, but why don't we replace them as we go? That might be a little more interesting, a little more exciting. Yes, I think we shall. So, let's start picking some switches, or some caps, excuse me. So, we've got our up key here. profile. Miami Knights. Way taller. You can see the uh, stock caps are scooped in only one along one axis. They're straight along the that axis. 
whereas the SA caps are scooped on the forward edge and shaped, sculpted and scooped along the side there. in here. I've got to figure this out. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here. Part of the reason I'm putting the caps on this board is because uh, it's got a fairly frankly boring um, original set of caps and so I thought these would make nice replacements and also uh, it's only got that fixed white backlight so I'm not going to be RGBing it up with this board um, but uh, that works well with these caps because these are of course not shine through caps these are uh, these are solid There's no light should shine through so that's actually how we do this. I'm going to swap positions here so that you can see what's happening better with the board as we go. Okay, we need our typical standard sized control. I guess 1.25U control and uh, menu buttons over there, which are on this other set of caps here, and it's kind of tough to get out, honestly. Menu goes there. Control goes there. Very good. Now, I don't see a function key specifically. I just see uh, a Windows key for left and right, which is fine. Just have to remember that the one that says win over here is actually a function key. Bar, and we're going to replace it with another standard length space bar to no one's surprise but there is also a longer space bar available here uh, for non-standard layouts it is a wee bit rattly I will say but that's more to do with the board than it is to do with the keycaps. Like I said, this probably won't be the final home of these caps, and uh, you may see me uh, putting these caps on a different board in future, uh, if and when that keyboard arrives. You'll see, you'll know what I mean when we get there. Uh, the board I'm thinking of putting these on has a very retro aesthetic to start with, which I think will pair very nicely with these caps. out. 
And you know, if I were a clever man, I would just be uh, replacing these as I go. So that I have somewhere to keep all the original caps. Yes, stabilizers on this are pretty rattly. I think I might have to see about lubing them a little bit. Because I don't necessarily love the rattle. Again, not the fault of the keycaps, although the material of the keycaps can have an impact on how a board sounds. That is true. when you brush your fingers along them. Curious about my review of the Velocifier TKL02 WS. You can check that out. I'll put a link down in the video description for you. caps are double shot ABS caps as well. So actually the material is very similar, but the thickness is drastically different. If you look, you can see original caps, max key caps. There's really no comparison. The originals were not bad. They are fine, actually, but um, but not nearly as impressive as the Max Key set. Delta is pretty extreme. This entire keyboard, the Velocifier TKL02WS, I believe costs around the $40 mark. Maybe $45, if I recall correctly. Whereas these keycaps alone are uh, $100 regularly on Banggood. So uh, there's a good reason why they're much more robust. Oh, that went on the wrong way around. And that may seem 
pretty expensive. Um, and it is. I mean, it's a lot of money to spend on little pieces of plastic. Uh, you're looking at a little under a dollar per keycap at that price. Um, I think there's about 120, 130 ish caps in this set. I'd, I'd have to check. I can't remember exactly. But, um, but amongst the world of keyboard enthusiasts <laughs> and enthusiast keycaps, uh, that's actually pretty reasonable. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but um, your <laughs> uh, expectations adjust when you're dealing with sort of bespoke enthusiast items. There we go. Uh, and I am uh, <laughs> not ashamed, well, maybe a little ashamed to say, that I've actually spent significantly more on sets of keys, <laughs> uh, which you will probably see here on the channel at some point when they arrive. They're part of a group buy. Um, and, you know, for many people, that's a price that you really can't, can't justify. Uh, and I get that. But for others, um, it's worth it. It's just all about what you prioritize, where your priorities lie. And if keyboards are your hobby, then dropping some money on a set of keycaps that you're going to type on every day, that you're going to have your fingers on every day, that you're going to look at every day, uh, suddenly doesn't seem so crazy. But yes, like any hobby or enthusiast thing, there's often some sticker shock. It's coming along, guys. I think I think this is gonna look really nice. If you had these keycaps, or if you're thinking about getting them, where do you want to put them on? Do you have a board in mind? Something with some awesome retro aesthetics that they will work nicely with. Oops. As I said, I've got any number of keyboards that these could go on. And I thought about a bunch of different ones, considered a bunch of different ones. Um, but the fact of the matter is, many of those other boards actually have very nice keycaps to start with or are very much about their RGB backlighting and I just I feel like it would be a bit of a waste to put these caps on a board that already has very nice caps or that is about showing off that backlighting because you wouldn't really be able to take advantage of that backlighting with these caps and so that reason this became the candidate board for this video. I thought it would be fun to see how much better it looks before and after. And how different it feels to type on before and after. Because again, you can see it right here. It's a much higher profile. Here, I'll, I'll finish the row and then I'll show you much taller profile.
Doesn't that sound nice? There's that profile difference I'm talking about. <laughs> Look at it. It's pretty extreme, isn't it? We'll finish these nav cluster keys last. Let's just stick. Stick with the main alpha numeric caps here so we can keep using this, this uh, bunch, of, bunch of caps instead of switching back and forth between the holders. with um, this board aside from those rattly stabilizers which are unfortunate is this big kind of ugly Velocifier logo over here it's just a bit obtrusive I think without it uh, this would look really really sharp so I think I'm going to take some maybe nail polish remover or something to it and see if it'll come off because I think it's just pad printed on the surface and I bet you it'll come off with the right solvent. Just got to figure out said that in the original review for this board. I talked about that, that logo, and how you might be able to remove it, because I wasn't crazy about it then either. There we go. I just never got around to do anything about it, because, uh, quite frankly, I don't use the same keyboard for long. I am often moving on to the next one because I've got a lot of keyboards coming through for review. So, unless it is a truly exceptional keyboard, uh, it doesn't often get a place on my desk as my daily driver. And this keyboard, while not a bad board by any stretch, actually very good for the price, well built, um, good feature set, uh, it's not very exciting, and it's not very unique. So, it did get rotated out rather quickly. But now, with these caps, perhaps it will earn a place on my desk for longer. All right, we're getting there, guys. Two more rows of the main body to go here. And then it'll just be those, uh, Nav cluster keys. Just love the richness of that color. I 
had also considered putting these caps on the Wamie keyboard that I somewhat recently reviewed. Now, I'm not sure if you'll have seen that review by the time this video comes out. Uh, but if you have, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, the Wamie is uh, the Wamie is an acrylic keyboard. The case is acrylic. It's a 60-ish percent design, closer to a 65 percent board, really. And uh, it's got a cool layout. It's got a cool aesthetic. And I think these keycaps would look baller on it especially if you were to set the lighting to match the magenta on the modifiers. Unfortunately, there is one weird, one weird trick, no, one weird keycap on the Wamie board. The right shift, it is uh, shorter than a standard right shift, but it's not quite as short as a right shift on a typical 75% or a 96 keyboard, uh, which I believe is a 2U uh, shift. It's a bit longer than that because of the weird layout on the Wamie, the non-standard layout. And so I don't think this set has a key that would fit that weirdo layout. Not quite, anyway. I might experiment and see, but I don't think it does. If it turns out that there is a cap that will fit in that spot on the Wami, then uh, I might be taking these all off <laughs> right after this video <laughs> and throwing them on the Wami because that thing is, I just think it would look really cool with the acrylic case glowing that that pink and uh, these keycaps on the top. row of the main body. I just love how freakishly tall these caps are. Look at them. <laughs> Isn't that fun? centered legends on these caps. I think they look 
really sharp. have to use this keycap puller in some cases to get the keys out of the plastic that they're in. Just because they're kind of slippery, there's not a lot of room to get your fingers in there. Like I said, Okay, we're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. It is now just the alpha, or sorry, the uh, the nav cluster that we need to do. We've used all the caps in this holder. Is the correct profile. Home. I keep thinking I must have the wrong profile. Yeah, I'm putting the wrong row on, but no, they're just really tall. This is actually a slightly lower profile row. So the next row down here features the right profile. I'll show you what I mean. See, we've got two delete keys. One is much taller. So if you had a 96 keyboard, for instance, where this was up on the top row, then uh, that's what you need to use. But we 
here we'll use the slightly lower profile version to match the others. to fit the whole thing in frame, but you can sort of see the whole thing if I hold it back here. I think it looks pretty sharp. And I'm looking forward to using it. I'm also looking forward to seeing if I can get this Philosophier logo off of there. But that is the set. switches. I would like to lube those stabilizers a little bit because they are pretty rattly. But other than that, man, this looks awesome. <laughs> I just love the aesthetic of these cats. So uh, I don't think these will be the last time you see these keycaps. I suspect that I will pull out this set in the future to swap onto a different board, but we shall have to see. And here we have the Max Key Miami Knights keycap set on a keyboard. And I'd like to give you a little typing test with it. Uh, I want you to be able to hear them in action. Uh, you might notice that this isn't the keyboard that I put them on originally. Uh, ultimately, I decided that the tkl 2 ws just was a bit too plain for such a, a nice set of keycaps. Nothing wrong with that board per se, but just the black board uh, with the black keycaps, they just didn't pop enough. So I wanted to put it on something with a little bit more color. And for that purpose, I have recruited the uh, Iquinix F96 Joker. This came with a set of keycaps in a purple, green, and white color scheme. Um, and it's got this gorgeous purple aluminum case. Uh, so I swapped out the keycaps, and here we are. Uh, I also thought it would be a good opportunity to demonstrate the keycap coverage that this set has. Um, so you can see that the non-standard right shift here, uh, the uh, non-standard profile for some of these uh, um, nav cluster keys like home and end, page up, page down. They're normally um, in R3, uh, but the max key set covers us for a 96% keyboard with this non-standard layout, which is great. And I think it looks pretty darn nice. I had originally, actually, after I put them on the tkl 2 ws which you saw me doing, I then swapped these caps onto uh, this guy here, the Wamiye K66. And I did that because this is a board with an acrylic case, a frosted acrylic case. And with the right color setup, you can get some pretty kind of 80s vibes, almost cyberpunky 80s vibes with this board. And I thought that would match the Miami Knights colorway 
very nicely with the magenta and the cyan. And uh, it did, but of course these are not shine through caps. Uh, and ultimately I just felt that the dark black caps on this very bright acrylic board with no shine through just didn't quite work aesthetically. But again, I was able to have good coverage uh, and I was able to find a cap to fit every uh, spot on this board, including this really weirdly sized right shift. Um, it turns out the plus key on the keypad uh, was just the right size for that. So overall, um, really good coverage available in this set. I've been able to fit it onto everything I've I've tried so far, including some more exotic layouts like these two boards. Uh, it sounded very nice on the Wamie K66 over there. Um, it was bottoming out on the acrylic, the plastic, and uh, that was pleasing. I find that on this Equinix board, you're bottoming out on aluminum, and it's a bit sharper, a little less pleasant with the ABS material. Uh, because ABS, I find, transmits quite a bit of the, the impact. Um, but it's not uh, unusable, for sure. But if you're using it with a metal top plate, uh, you might want to consider getting O-rings to dampen that impact, that sharp impact, just a little bit. Anyway, no O-rings on this board right now, just the raw keycaps on the switches. And the switches are simply Cherry MX Reds, so nothing too fancy here. So uh, I'm just going to type for a while. I'm just going to type some passages, let you watch and hear. There's no fancy lighting or anything. I just want you to be able to see and hear these keycaps in action. And hopefully enjoy the typing sounds as well.
And there we have it, my friends, the typing test with the max key SA Miami Knights ABS key caps. Uh, typing on them is a real pleasure. They are um, really satisfying because they are such a high profile. Uh, there's a lot of action from top to bottom. And uh, each keystroke really feels meaningful, I guess. You really have to dedicate uh, each keystroke. Um, if you're the type of person that really likes to just kind of glide over the tops of your keycaps, maybe these aren't for you because the little scoops on each one, as well as their high profile, means that you have to give each keystroke its due. Um, and it was a little bit of a strange choice in retrospect to pair these with Cherry MX Red switches on this board here because reds are not maybe the best typing switches, but these keycaps certainly are very satisfying and probably best used uh, for typing. Uh, nevertheless, uh, if you like the look at them or like the look of them, the aesthetic, and you think you like the feel, I encourage you to check them out. Um, they are exceptionally well made. They are without a doubt um, a huge cut above the stock keycaps that you get on pretty much any keyboard except uh, the most expensive. Um, and I will remind you, this isn't a formal review. This is just some sort of informal casual impressions. I'm not going to run down the pros and cons or anything. Um, but uh, big thank you to banggood.com for sponsoring this video by providing these keycaps today. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the unboxing and the keycap swap on the Velocifier board, and I hope you enjoyed uh, the typing on the Iquinix board here. Uh, if you're interested in picking these up, I do have a discount code for you. It's down below at the top of the video description. It will bring the price down to $86.99, I believe, uh, or thereabouts, about $80 or $85.99, maybe $86. Anyway, uh, it's a small discount off the, uh, the regular price, but uh, it's better than nothing. Uh, and yeah, that is quite a bit to spend on keycaps, um, but <laughs> They can certainly get a lot more expensive, especially if you're participating in group buys uh, and more sort of bespoke keycap sets. But I would say that the quality of these caps stacks up to uh, any of those uh, more expensive, more bespoke uh, group buys and that sort of thing. They are really, really well made, a very thick, uh, durable uh, ABS material. So. You certainly will not be disappointed with the quality at that price. So a uh, link down below in the video description, please go check them out. There's a coupon code for you there. And if you do purchase through that link, a portion of your purchase does come back to support the channel, which of course I appreciate very much. So please uh, give them a look. All right, thank you all again for watching. I hope you found this video uh, enjoyable, interesting, and relaxing, and I look very forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now, guys.